Welcome back to the basement. Um, it's Memorial Day. Um, it's a day to, you know, remember and, and give thanks for uh, everyone's friends and family and loved ones who've, who've uh, made the ultimate sacrifice there, um, protecting our way of life so we can do things like this. So thank you very much. Um, you know, it's all appreciated. Uh, apparently, my energy level felt a little off yesterday in the recording. And, uh, yeah, I have, uh, I have that cold of, uh, non-domestic origin, shall we say. Uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, wifey woke up this morning. Last night she didn't feel good. She thought it was heartburn and back pain. Uh, yeah, she's, she's doing fine now, too. It's not a big deal. But, either way, I'm trying. I'm trying. So, you know, we, we, we didn't, we didn't do the Miller Lite. We went for the full high life today, because why not, you know? It's, uh, mmm. Cheers. Oh, it's not good. Oh. Oh. Miller High Life tastes nothing like Miller Lite. Eh, I'll get used to it. Big deal. Hmm. I have to drink swole, by the way, people. I've found I'm uh, sensitive to uh, high-quality beer with a lot of hops. So it's sort of like stick to the cheap stuff. That's eh, all right. A few less calories. Not that it matters much. Okay. In my overzealousness to get wheels in this thing yesterday, I missed uh, a few little detail items on the front and back of the lower hull. So we're going to get those uh, get those glued in place if they're appropriate to do so at this point. Uh, I often leave stowage off until after the main paint job is done. But I'm pretty sure all this stuff was just painted <clears throat> body color um, on all the tanks out in the wild. Let's get on that and I'll be right back. Okay, well, we're back at it. Shopping while building. Yay, Ian! I didn't make it through the second part of this build series without buying something. And I was thinking ahead, because uh, I, I wanted to add headlights and potentially, you know, a uh, tail ergo marker lights or something. And I got to the stage in the instructions where we're going to start electronics. And uh, the Sheridan uses the same uh, DMD unit. Uh, and, uh, or DMDT unit, whatever, and it has headlights and taillights. It also has a, a searchlight on top, which is sweet. Um, and I was, I was thinking, well, it's not as easy <laughs> hooking onto the, I have no idea. Like, I, on the old DMDs, I knew where I could get power from, no problem. Usually straight battery voltage, I'd throw a resistor on and throw my LEDs in there. Well, this has an 8-pin connector for the... LED headlight and taillight harness on the Sheridan and that's part number drop the first number 7305117 from Tamiya currently um, uh, I looked up the control unit it's the same part number between the Sheridan here control unit whatever um, same part number uh, obviously different programming I noticed this one has this little this red here and a red sticker here uh, probably because this is the first time they've changed the sounds on it without giving it like a different model number, I suppose. So, I ordered the LED headlight and taillight harness from Tamiya in California. I did it now because, okay, if any of my viewers are from California or live in California, do not take offense to this unless you've worked at a uh, distribution facility there. They have the slowest warehouse workers in the known universe. Well, well, besides Eagle Moss Collectibles in Indiana, their warehouse is just, it's, it's like, it's like a, a parody. It's like, it's like they're making one of those funny spoof movies about, uh, TGI Fridays or Applebee's. Um, it's bad. But, Tamiya, great. Love them. Good service. Just, they're really slow. So we'll get that shipped out, hopefully, this week, and have it sometime next week, so we can, uh, test that harness out, uh, to see if we get lights. And if we do... I'll just chop off the giant LEDs that are on that harness and, and solder on my own little uh, little micro SMDs. I know it sounds wasteful. Um, and this is a one millimeter JST connection here. I did find some one millimeter eight pin JST pigtails on, on Amazon. Uh, and to be honest, they wouldn't get here until nearly the end of July at this point. And they weren't any cheaper than just buying the damn LED harness from uh, from Tamiya directly. So that's what I did. Um, if everyone wants to go out and uh, get one now before I test it, go right ahead. Part number 
That is the light LED harness from the Sheridan M551. So, put away our always keep your manuals. That's where, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get on the electronics now. Sorry for the sidetrack, but I was just excited to tell everyone if you really wanna add those lights, this is probably gonna be the way to do it. All right, be right back. Okay, my buddy sends me the funniest TikToks sometimes. Uh, Google calf mule cargo socks. It's a prank gift box, but it's like, he knew me. Anything with cargo pockets, I'm, I'm in. Oh yeah, you couldn't have figured out that Ian wears cargo pants and cargo shorts? Hey, look what I do down here. Come on. I'm like the number one consumer for cargo pockets. Okay, that being said, see we're feeling better already. We got our electronicals in. We got our, uh, our TRU-09 for this bad boy, the Fine Spec 2.4. Officially known as the TTU-09, good luck finding spare receivers. I just buy a new radio for every damn tank. Because I'm like, well, the tank's a grand, why not just buy the damn radio? We've got the uh, rear louver thing on, magnet mount right there, magnet mount, magnet mount. Loving the magnet mounts. Welcome to the current century, Tamiya, finally with using magnets. Uh, upper hull supports are in these little, little L brackets, so that's nice. This thing is just it is a bomb shelter it's so tough it's it's a, it's ridiculous um so we got all that in like i said we ordered our uh our led harness for a sheridan maybe it'll work there's no accoutrement on the back for convoy lights they're usually like on the sides right here in real real life so i'm gonna have to oh figure out some way to bodge them in on uh, the JS2, it actually had the little plastic elbows for the convoy lights, and I was able to drill them out very carefully and fish a tiny SMD LED through there. This doesn't have them, so what I may end up doing is... Uh, stop hitting the table. You're shaking the camera. Jack, hey, thank you. Um, I may just take some sprue and make, make a little elbow, you know, drill through both pieces and then glue them together and... You know, uh, do it that way, potentially. Uh, that should work. Because I like, I like lights on my tank. Sorry. If you don't, I mean, it didn't come with any. So if you do it box standard, nothing wrong with that. I just like the lights. It adds that little extra pizzazz. Because that's what a post-war tank needs, is pizzazz. Right? Yeah, of course. We add pizzazz to everything down here. In the kingdom of dead cockroach carcasses. Okay, so, uh, oh, upper deck and uh, turret ring. We finally get to lube up our sack of balls. Nothing like squeezing greasy balls through your fingers to get that turret rotation set up. There we go. We're going to have a nice ball greased turret ring. It's going to be lovely. Oh, and then this thing, and here, keep in mind, we had the, oh, oh. We had the addendum, so it has some stuff going on here that changed. So I'll read. Oh, I hate read. I just like looking at the pictures. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, it's everybody's favorite time. Ian greasing his sack of balls on camera. There, oh, look at that generous spooge of grease in the ball sack, and then oh yeah, massage, massage the balls. Okay, well, there's a reason for this silliness, okay? Is what you can do now is squeeze a ball out one at a time and then just plop it right into its little home in the turret ring. Ah, genius. I don't, I, I, who knows if I'm the first one that did this or not, but I hope I won't be the last. And it does two things. One, it pre-lubes your turret ring balls. And uh, secondly, ooh, it, it just feels smushy and fun. And it lets you, they, they go flying everywhere if you don't grease them. There's nothing harder to corral than a dry ball. You don't want to use unlubed balls. They just go everywhere. Uh, the greased balls do not travel very far if you do drop one. Um, it's, it's definitely highly recommended to grease your sack of balls, okay? I'm gonna finish squirting my greasy balls into this ring. And uh, once I'm done uh, ejecting all my balls with their schmoo and spooge on them, 
uh, we'll, we'll bolt this thing down and we'll have a completed spinny turret ring. I'll be right back. I've got some, uh, I've got some work to do here. Yeah. All right, well, this is a little weird. Um, I'm building the turret rotation assembly and we have our six speed gearbox. Um, and this is the slipper gear. And this is, you know, the gear from there. But um, Houston, you have a slight problem. They changed the gear size. Here's an old one that I removed from another tank. And this is, this is a 36, 36 tooth large gear and a, a 14 tooth inner gear. Well, the new one is like 34 teeth outer gear and 15 teeth inner gear. So they're, they're different sizes. So we can't actually, well, we might be able to, it might work, but who knows, um, use our gear out of our, you know, $20 six-speed transmission kit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little surgery to this, and we're just going to, uh, we're just going to glue it. This is, there's no contrast here. There we go. We're just going to glue it so it doesn't slip. Um, honestly, uh, our, our well-greased balls are really smooth, and the, the, the lower hull is not crowded, so we could probably get away with not doing anything, uh, just maybe not greasing the inside of this gear. Uh, we could probably do that and be fine, but also, you know, the center shaft of that blue gear Totally different size. This has a much smaller shift. Did they update something? Let's look at the uh, let's look at the sprue. Five six oh one nine five six oh three. No, twenty fourteen. That's weird. Um, I don't know, but it's it's just ever so slightly different. So we're not we're just gonna not do our little uh, our little switcheroos with the gears. But let's get this together, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Ah, okay, so the upper, the front half of the center of the upper hull is done. And we've got our little uh, hatch there. I didn't put the periscopes in because they're clear plastic parts, and I'm going to paint them separately and install them afterwards. So there's a little, little, some sort of fueling port. I don't know what it is. Oil, water, uh... English breakfast tea, Earl Grey. I'm not sure what they put in there. Who knows? I'll have to look at the uh, manual. What we're doing now is making our front um, headlights functional. Uh, uh, failure, Ian. Battery was backwards. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. So to do that, we had to drill a tiny little hole in this post, a one millimeter hole, and then we drilled a two millimeter hole in the little headlamp thing, and that's just big enough for this itty bitty. Um, if you're looking for them, <clears throat> they're gonna be 0603 SMD LEDs. Uh, they come red, white, blue. I use a warm white. Um, just to simulate more realistic lighting effects on uh, older vehicles. And we just get these little, these little wires. Fajada. This is when I, this is when I want to start cursing. There we go. We just get these little wires when I want to start cursing. That's when I wake up. No. There we go. And we pull. Oh, we pull them right through. Um, the hole's just big enough. For the LED to like, there you go. And you want to write about there. And then to secure this one, I'm just going to use just a dab of CA. Dab of CA, don't get it on your fingers, Ian. Little kicker. Okay. We got the bulb facing out. These are single-sided LEDs. They are directional. Make sure the little colored lensy part is pointing out. And then we let that set up for a little while. But then we just uh, fish the wires through the hole there and push down the light. 
and your wires come out the back. Easy peasy. So we're doing this for now to prepare for that LED harness from the uh, Sheridan that I ordered from Tamiya. California to Georgia shipping five-ish business days pre scamdemic uh what now i don't know we'll see they say they take up to three days to ship so my order is going to be in first thing tomorrow morning when they finally get to work and we'll see <laughs> how quick they pick and pack and ship it um but yeah we should have it here i'm i'm not optimistic we'll have it for next weekend but we'll have it sometime during the week after that but uh, hopefully we can do stuff and leave some wire leads um, you know, strung across the tank that I could wire it in after the fact. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're at. We gotta do some more little, some more little stowage on here. I'm not putting the spare track links on, obviously. Um, there's a bar that holds the track links down, so that's not gonna go on. But I'm putting the storage bin on this side, so I'll get that on. And, uh, we'll take it from there. Mmm, BRB. Alrighty, uh, wife's not feeling so well, and the dogs need to be fed and stuff things have to happen what is going on here there we go um so here's where we're at we got our headlights wired in and installed we've got this stuff done we've got this part on we've extended our led wiring back to here uh so that should be more than enough with it'll meet up with the the tamiya harness that we ordered <clears throat> and there we go for now i am i am uh this wasn't as much progress as part one but it was uh, slow tedious things we had the soldering iron out we had other things going the hot snot gun running we got to unplug for safety and uh yeah that's where we're at for now <clears throat> she looks good uh my tamiya parts probably not this week obviously she'll probably be here next week sometime and then uh what else oh we're waiting on uh an L705 millimeter machined aluminum barrel with a fume extractor, right? Fume extractor, not bore evacuator, fume extractor. We gotta get that, the British tank. Uh, yeah, so we're getting that, that coming in and that's gonna basically allow us to forward date this tank a bit. I also, again, shipping is killing me. We have an M1919 coming in from DKLMRC. Uh, that went, dear God, surface mail from Hong Kong but <clears throat> it did ship back in March so fingers crossed she's almost here um, that's just a little you know cherry on top type of thing so that's where we're at and we'll see you next time don't go anywhere stay right where you are even if it's a week don't move don't go to the bathroom shower eat no I'm kidding um, have a nice day everybody enjoy adios